Welcome to this week's installment of Reading with Robin, your number one destination since 2002 for insightful author interviews and discussions on everything literary. And with no further introduction, your host, Robin Call. Cookbooks, food, all the best things, and a return guest to Reading with Robin. Thrilled to have Kathy Barrow on. She is a freelance food writer, cooking teacher, just awesome Instagrammer, woman about the world, home re- renovator, <laughs> everything. <laughs> she's the author of Pi Squared, which we talked about just last year. I can't even believe that. And now she is back with a brand new, gorgeous, do not miss this cookbook. Oh, my goodness. When Pies Fly. We had the early edition, which was lovely enough. And then the finished copies arrived, and they are just delicious enough to eat. The food jumps off the pages. And... It is always a treat to connect, and we're thrilled to be hosting Kathy coming up. So welcome. Welcome back to the show. We're going to see you soon in person, and I'm exhausted just watching your Instagram feed. What's been going on? Well, everything. It's been such an exciting time. When Pies Fly launched just a few days ago, and I've yeah. been in El Paso, and I'm going to Pittsburgh, and I'm off to Chicago and San Francisco, so it's the really exciting time. When I get to go around and show my new baby to everybody. Uh, And the response has been great. So I'm happy. I bet it has been because, like, you just see cookbooks. I don't know. Everyone I know, you just want them. People collect them. They're beautiful. They, you know, you give instructions so that people can follow. and And you just... You, you feel like, and it, you know, holidays are coming up, and like, oh, what am I going to make? And let me take out this gorgeous new cookbook and see what Kathy's doing. And you just did. I was just like, of course, you're not stalking. I was studying. But I see the Kanish, the Kanish knockout, and the Kanishes in this yes. book are so beautiful. So have, talk about that because that just happened. I have to say that the Kanishes are a little kind of a sleepy chapter that I wanted in there, but I didn't really think would be a big deal. And as it turns out, there are a lot of people very, very excited about commissions. Uh, So a local, a local (laughs) DC organization, uh, TEDx, uh, that, uh, raises money for legal aid, uh, has an annual celebrity chef cook-off. That's what they call it. And one year it was Kugel, and Mm. this year it was Knishes. And because there's a chapter in the book, I was invited to participate, and I made these delicious onion and sauerkraut filled Knishes, and they're They're just so good. Um, So I won the second in the popular vote. Wonderful. I'm very pleased with that. Yeah, popular. They liked it a lot. I had a great time. It was just a really, really fun evening. So that's my Kanish story. So you had such a good time. And did you get to see, were there other um, celebrity chefs that you knew or people that you wanted to get to see, or was it all a big surprise? All these, uh, well, there were four other D.C. area or Virginia-based chefs, and they were very talented. And the winning Kanish was a, a really interesting piece of puff pastry with whipped potatoes and mm. caramelized garlic oh. and or um, <laughs> and then on top of that pickled mustard seed and wow. it it was pretty fantastic. Yeah, Not your grandma's knish. That's no, for sure. mine was my grandma's knish. <laughs> I love well I was reading that you, you got um, there were cookbooks that were passed down to you by your grandmothers. Is that where some of this yeah. came from? Yeah. Absolutely. I always refer to them when, like around the high holidays or whenever mm-hmm. I want to cook yeah. something like really traditional, I go back and look through those cookbooks. But the real stash is my grandmother's uh, set of recipe cards written her in oh. her little spidery handwriting. And I have those and I flip through them and I found a Kanish recipe. My brother and I don't have any memory of her making these. So mm-hmm. she must have made them at, you know, younger or yeah. Maybe as a family member, as a young girl, but they really are delicious. And my grandmother's recipes always work. Practical and tried and true. And also, that you're so lucky that they were written down because so many recipes in families aren't because it's, you know, yeah. you have to sort of watch them and mimic or, you know, they just cooked by feel. So to have those written down in her handwriting, those are like the biggest treasures 
ever. I have hundreds of recipe cards from both of my grandmothers and my mother. Wow. And it's just one of my joys is to spend an afternoon uh, thumbing through them to see what inspiration comes. Do you have them all scanned in somewhere and saved? And No. I, the, the tactile experience for me is part yeah. of the joy. And I mean, at some point, just forever. I'm like on the next generation, like forever. Know, that they're like, what if something happens to the cards? And we have them too. I love um, my grandmother's recipes have little notes that will remind yes. people of, well, we use this, but, you know, so-and-so didn't like nuts, so I made separate for this one and that. And I exactly. love the best. And um, my, yeah. my grandmother's knish recipe for the uh, potato knish had cottage cheese in the potatoes. Oh, wow. I think it's because my grandfather was on a perpetual diet. I was going to say mean, it must have been the diet. It was. <laughs> and the poor man, I, I mean, he would escape that. the house and Aww. he would eat, like, whatever he could. <laughs> but at home, it was cottage cheese conditions for pops. That That's is hilarious. Right. That is, I know my grandmother would make like separate coleslaw and one was the Weight Watchers and it had like ay, the sweet and low in it right. and it would have like, you know, and it would have a, a note because, you know, then she would be afraid somebody wouldn't eat anything. So she wanted everyone to know what was what. But I love a cottage cheese knish for your grandfather. Yeah. That's just pretty the much, poor guy. I, there's nothing I can say after that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is the pinnacle of this conversation, and I'm chatting with Kathy Barrow. Her book, When Pigs Fly, her gorgeous new cookbook, is out now. Visit her website, and I think I probably told you this last time, but this artwork on your website is just gorgeous. That, that's my friend Marilyn Nayron, and oh, she's done a beautiful um, banner for the website. She also oh. did a drawing in the book Pie Squared to show you how to cut a slab pie. She's That's really the one. Very yes. Talented. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm so drawn to her art. It's just, uh, it's one. You it's should fabulous. Follow gorgeous. her on Instagram. It's I will. M P Naron N A R O N. I'm writing this down. I will on Instagram and follow Kathy on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook and see where she's going to be appearing. And November 7th in Rhode Island, we have a huge plan. And we have been cooking this up for a long time, and we are just so excited. And what is it about pies? Because you had the slab pies, now it's when pies fly. Like, what is it about pies that people are just so drawn to? Well, I think that the idea of pie has existed for a long time and in many, many cultures. You take a delicious, savory or sweet, but highly flavored filling and wrap it in your pastry of choice, whether that is um, puff pastry or uh, phyllo or Mm -hmm. empanada pastry, or think about samosas or pasties in Britain. There are just a million ways to wrap things up, strudel. And I became fascinated. I say to people that, you know, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And after you make 200 (laughs) pies, everything looks like a pie. And that's where this book really came from, Uh. is that more that I thought about, little bits and pieces that were in my refrigerator or maybe two Mm -hmm. peaches on the counter, what could I wrap that in to Uh make it even more delicious? Yeah, and so dough. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And I I have some really delicious doughs in this. I I developed a buttermilk-based dough that you use to make little fried pies, kind of like, remember, we used to get... Um, hostess apple pies or the fried oh, pies yeah. at um, oh, McDonald's well. even. Mm-hmm. But these are delicious and homemade <laughs> and all blistered on the outside yeah. and crispy. And they taste like a funnel cake with fruit inside. They're just wow. so good. So there are a lot of different doughs. There's a quick puff pastry that I think is just perfect. I'll never buy puff pastry again. It's very easy to do. Um, I made eight batches yesterday, so I can speak to that. Wow. (laughs) Yes, yes, you can. And do you freeze them? I mean, is this something I do. So when you're in the mood, can you do that sort of thing? And then just you keep them so you know that, you know, if you want to grab one out, like you're saying, there's certain things 
that probably are worth buying, I guess, maybe, and then certain things yeah. that you're saying, like, no, it's easy to do, it's going to come out right, and why would you bother buying it? Oh, I think you can buy pie dough, you can buy puff pastry, you can buy phyllo, anything. I just want people to make more pie. But right. some of these smaller pies, like the there's a broccoli and cheese ham pie in here that yeah. is the perfect mid-afternoon snack. It's made with a cheddar cheese pie dough, and it's stuffed with broccoli and cheese. And you can freeze them unbaked and pop them into a toaster oven, and in 25 minutes you have this hot, delicious pie for one. Um, wow. And then, it just, yeah, it, everything so sounds like I want to run and make it listening to you because <laughs> it is so di- – because that is what happens. Like people don't have the time – to cook sometimes. So when you're in the mood to do all that and you have it ready to go and you can just pop it in, you know what you've made, yeah. you know the ingredients and you know it's going to be delicious. And, and that's, I would know, say like, that. like a weekend spent one day, if you just make a bunch of pie dough and mm-hmm. then the next day you just make a bunch of little pies, little, I call them poppers, the little two bite pies. Those are yeah. yummy. Yeah. Um, and you can freeze them and just have, zip bags of them in the freezer to take out when people stop over, when you're hungry in the afternoon. I have a uh, bacon, egg, and cheese one. And it's a breakfast pastry. Perfect I mean, breakfast. Isn't it better to eat that than to go to the deli? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I was just in New York, and I was thinking about, well, number one, I went to one of those carts, and I haven't had a condition. I don't remember. It's been so many years. And I uh-huh. thought, I'm going to have one. They were out, so I've had Kanish uh, on the brain, right? And then yeah. there was an, another thing in the morning, like I just wanted to grab something, but we weren't home. So, I mean, you have to sort of rely on that. We, weren't, we did not have a lot of time. But that's mm-hmm. the kind of thing that I wish that I had had. And then when you have that in your mind, like nothing else will do. And so, right. <laughs> you know, and it's sort of, it's back to school time and everybody's in a hurry to get kids off and what's, what's for breakfast. So that sounds like a really great thing to have at the ready. And it's, it's done in it, you know, you send somebody off in a good way, you know, with a fulfilling, healthy kind of all yeah. done, you know, grab it and go. When the grab and go. Cornish, when the Cornish miners um, would go off to work in the morning and cold, Cornwall, Polark times, Polark uh-huh. times. Um, the pasty was a hot pie that they would wrap and put in their pockets to keep them warm, oh, to keep wow. their hands warm. And then they would still be warm by the you know, time they were ready to eat them. But that's part of how that they were That is so created. practical. Yeah, I it's love the a, history. The history of the mm-hmm. of the recipes that, that get included with cookbooks it's it's the narrative that's so fascinating and the storytelling and how all of that wraps up into what you want to share and the recipes. And so when you go through this, so the book is broken down into different um, categories like hand pies and the pie poppers or um, the empanadas, the galettes. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Maybe like pick a favorite from some of the categories to highlight. Oh, uh I definitely have some favorites. You and I have talked about like mm-hmm. um, antipasto stromboli, which yes. is it's so popular at parties that I'm not kidding. I've taken it, I don't know, a dozen times to big potlucks. You put it down on the table. <laughs> you turn to say hello to your host. <laughs> and when you turn back, it's gone. It's, it's like magic. Unbelievable. Yeah. Right? It's <laughs> so good. It's everything that you love about the you know, classic red sauce Italian restaurant um, antipasto plat, plate, you know, that has meats and cheeses and artichoke hearts and olives and little pieces of mozzarella, all of that wrapped up inside puff pastry. Mm. And then you slice it. It's so good. Wow. Uh, so that's <laughs> definitely a the disappearing big winner. Act. Yeah, sounds, yeah, sounds like it. Um, now, galettes are free-form pies, and they're so often seen you know, with filled with fruit. And mm-hmm. Bon Appetit has a big one this month. You know, they're all in all the magazines, apple galettes, berry they're galettes. Yeah. They're really beautiful and so easy. And there's, I have three uh, different fruit ones in the book, but I went to town creating savory ones. And there's mm-hmm. even a Philly cheesecake one with a cheese sauce and, um, and roast beef and, peppers wow. and onions and pickled peppers on top, and that's really yummy. 
um, uh, strudels. Boy, strudel, I always was afraid of strudel. I had images of 10 German women standing around a massive table pulling a piece of strudel as big as the state of Rhode Island. You know? And the fact is, strudel, pulling a strudel dough, it's about the size of a good-sized kitchen tea towel. You know, it's yeah, not much bigger. That's funny. Because well, you get an idea stuck own, in your head, and then there it is, yeah. you know? And you're only feeding eight eight people, let's say, with a strudel. You're not feeding an, an army. It's, right. it's small. It's family <laughs> size. So that was a whole thing to learn, too. I, I've had a lot of fun with this book. It's so interesting, right, to think the misconceptions maybe or that somebody in the family was always the baker, so people are sort of afraid of it, like that's their thing. So, like, everybody sort of gets their thing. And And I think the part about cooking and all of that and – so many people have been quoted Julia Child famously about having fun with it and just listening to you describe all like everything can go and it's such it's such a creative artistic endeavor and for people who prefer to just you know to follow they if you can read or watch videos or any of it you can create this and and it's um right. and it's and it's a beautiful thing to share and like you said sometimes it disappears by the time you <laughs> turn back around <laughs> do you do you have things when you have people come over like where you've hidden stuff so like when it is gone you're like aha there's more or like you save <laughs> it for somebody because you know what's going to happen do you do you have like any of those little hide and seek tricks going on um, well, sometimes I hide the chocolate from my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Does he know where you hide it? it, it only no, works but, but he'll no. say to me, I know that you have some chocolate somewhere in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? I know, like you could just, yeah. because sometimes there is a sense of like you just want a little something. And I would imagine in your house there's always... You know, you, you have the ingredients. You could write something or something in the freezer, and it it gets tricky hiding things because if you don't remember where you've hidden them, and then you know, I mean, all sorts of things with food. But I love that. And then can you tell by your face if you do have something hiding, or if this truly? Is he just specific? knows. He does. I mean, there's always <laughs> there's always chocolate in some place. <laughs> That's so funny. And so, and what are some of the things like you always have in your home? So if if you were having something unexpected or there's a storm or you want to bake, like what are like essentials for people to, to have so they can always be doing something? Well, I always have pie dough in the freezer. Always. Mm-hmm. I've learned with my method, which is in both of the books, I make yes. pie dough in the food processor. And mm-hmm. I've learned that I can make three rounds of it before I have to completely wash the food processor. Ah, and that's important. It, and I am kind of anti-dishes. I really hate mm-hmm. them. And so mm-hmm. once I get to that and I have to wash it, I'm not making any more pie dough. But now I have three batches of pie dough, so two go in the freezer, right? Oh, it's I very love that. simple. Yeah. So I always have that. Um, I, I guess I always have b- uh, butter and mm-hmm. flour and sugar, and I have lots of different kinds of baking chocolate. I have lots yeah. of nuts and dried fruits. Uh, so I'm always prepared to make something. Yeah. So is it? You Leah, never know what's in my freezer. Yeah, I, it's funny. Like when you, I know this. It's such a rare occurrence too. So that if I have some of those types of things that you would think I'm doing something. So if there are, if there is chocolate in the freezer or the fridge, it's like, oh, mom must be baking something. Or you know, it used, <laughs> it used to be that. Now it's like, well, she can always just get get more. It used to there used to be kind of a reverence for items that looked like they were specific for something as opposed to like my you touch would, this. My mother would drop. Going cross things we weren't supposed to. <laughs> Did she? That's <laughs> yeah, so and, funny. And she drew faces on the hard-boiled eggs because she put them back in the egg thing, and uh-huh. she drew faces on them so you knew that they were the hard-boiled ones. Oh, that's so cute. That's really funny. See, skull and cry. I, that would that would pretty much say like you know, was it Alice in Wonderland? Drink me. That's you know, right. that's just so that is so enticing. But uh, yeah, there's it, there's it's so there's so much around food. There's so many discussions and and the memories too, and the 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 family stories and who you know, like we were talking about earlier with recipes and who liked what and how how things are passed down. I mean, still there are things that we make and, and you, I will think of somebody and that that was their favorite thing. Or, you know, then you, then there's the idea, I don't know if you've had this happen, where you bake something or make something and once someone likes it, that's their thing. 
and I don't know if somebody ever will say something to be polite, if people are polite anymore, and then, like, you're forever doing that, and they maybe just were being nice once 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever. know. My, my uh, stepdad has been having me make a sour cherry pie for him for more than 30 years. Wow. And so that, you know, I know that is always his pie, even though I've made it a bazillion times. Whenever I make delicious. it, I think of him. Sour yeah, tree. Yeah, that's good. that's the thing. Like the the foods that we associate with people, and there's so much love poured into all of that. And I I really, you know, that sometimes becomes the secret ingredient. But I do really think, like, have you experienced that where you're in different moods, the food's going to come out differently, the baking's going to come out differently? Mm. I, I I think that's more true with my savory cooking. Oh, interesting. Uh, than with my baking. My baking is pretty precise. I'm very uh, consistent there because I mm-hmm. do it for a living but when I'm just oh, that's true. riffing that? in the kitchen you know right. some nights I'm my riffs are like straight up cafeteria food I just have no <laughs> I have no imagination left here's your baked chicken here's your green yeah tea. here you but, go um, you know and some nights I, I go a little wild so you know yeah, like everybody yeah and I think also like people's um I, I know ovens aren't exactly always the same, and you know how do you sort of prepare for that? Like you can follow directions, but if you don't really know, I mean, as far as testing things, or I guess it's what it should yeah. look like. But it's not, you know, and baking is pretty. I, it's precise. Well, I I always and forever recommend using a scale to weigh mm-hmm. everything because oh, then you get that, that yeah. consistency. Yeah. But um, you're right. There are different. There are different. Things. There's, if it's a rainy day, there's more moisture in the air. Mm-hmm. If, if there's so much variation. I will personally test every recipe three times before I consider it done. And that means that I will play with it until I love the recipe, and mm-hmm. then I'll t- test that recipe three times. And then I send it off to a woman who I've worked with for several years now who lives in Maine, so she has different everything. And mm-hmm. she tests the recipe three times oh, that's and makes so sure cool. that it comes out the same. And so all my recipes have been tested several times. And if I have concerns, I have friends all over the country, and I'll just send them a recipe and say, will you try this for me? Oh, that's so cool. So, like, you have people all over, well, I mean, Maine, and you're, and you're down D.C., but, like, that's such a – I love the – I'm, like, imagining – a cookbook this way of different interpretations from across the country and how these yeah. recipes come out and then they'll make them. So that's like, you know, somebody that will proofread or, you know, you're in a writer's group and people will read each other's work. That's right. I like yours better. You get to make <laughs> what your recipes and then they will give you their feedback. And is there anything, have, can you think of anything where something was drastically altered because somebody, you know, came up yes. with something very um, different? My recipe tester, Christine Redalevich, who's in Maine, mm-hmm. wrote to me once and she said, you know, this recipe turns out to be very expensive, and I oh. think that you could improve it by reducing, it was a crab recipe, by reducing the amount of crab and adding these other things to bulk up the filling. And it was a very smart idea, and one that, when you're, you know, when you're head down doing recipes, Mm-hmm. I, I'm not thinking necessarily about how much it's going to cost to make it if I'm just trying to get my recipes written. Right. And that right. that per, was was really insightful and, in fact, made me go back and look at all the recipes with that hat on to say, am I asking people to invest too much in this one thing? So it was very, it was very insightful. Feedback. I mm-hmm. like that. That is really good feedback because also, I mean, do you get up in the morning or during the day? Are you just like, oh, I have an idea for this? Are you constantly sort of scribbling? What's the process for coming up with recipes or, you know, how you're pour- um, you know, where you get your inspiration? I think that almost anything can be the inspiration, whether it's mm-hmm. a dinner out where I have a combination of flavors that is intriguing yeah. or – from reading new or old cookbooks or what's in the paper. I mean, all of, everybody who writes about food inspires me, and I hope I can do the same. Um, but for the most part, going to the farmer's market, going to visit farmers, looking at gardens and seeing what's looking beautiful and ripe, and that is very inspirational at this time of year. I'm 
certainly. Oh, the fall. Oh, the um, fall. Yeah. It's yeah. just It's just like a garden buffet everywhere. Everywhere you go, and you yeah. know, here in England. I just want to make England. orange things. You know, there's pumpkins <sighs> yeah. and butternut squash and acorn uh, squash. And everything has to be a little orange. So. I I agree. And it started early this year. It started like in August. And I'm on the phone with the author of When Pies Fly: Handmade Pastries from Strudels to Stromboli and Pinatas to Knishes. And it's Kathy Barr who will be in Rhode Island on Thursday, November 7th. So check out our Facebook page, Reading with Robin. And also, we have copies of this to give away. So we will have copies of When Pies Fly up on the Reading with Robin page. Visit Kathy's website, and from there you can find her on all the other social media um, channels. Uh, it's caramelized banana and Nutella pie poppers. Like, I see Nutella, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's just an immediate attraction. Those look just incredibly delicious. Yeah, don't forget that they're in a chocolate dough, too. <laughs> I did not read that far ahead, but now it's even <laughs> crazier. And and this now I know you talked earlier about the different doughs. So in this cookbook, how many doughs are sort of represented? Uh, I think there are 15. Wow. That's a lot of different doughs. And so what's like mm-hmm. the most... Complic- I mean, I hate to say complicated. You know, what's the most uh, time intensive um, where, like, you should know what you're doing with this dough? Or are they all people can you follow know, it? Uh, there are a couple that are two-step. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's a savory dough that's got caramelized onions that you then work into butter. So you wow. have a, what, what we call a compound butter. And then mm-hmm. that has to chill. So there's, you know, there's a step okay. of first doing the onions and then chilling the onion butter and then making the dough and then chilling that dough. So that add is a little time intensive, although it doesn't take, you know, some of it is just chilling time. Um, sure. And then there's a brown butter pie dough, with, and that works the same way where you brown the butter and then you chill it and then you make it into pie dough. So those are time intensive, but they're not difficult at all. I see. Right. You just have um, to plan for it. And, well, that's part of reading a recipe all the way through before you start. Like, do you ever hear people like, well, I started in, and, gee, I didn't know I was going to need a pan. Or, I try so hard to help people understand that they're going to have to do that, but there's, uh, you know, I, they have to read. That's people just jump in. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about being on Reading with Robin and talking about books all the time, and, and I, I chat about this in terms of just events and what's on the ticket information is that for a bunch of readers, it's uh, endlessly fascinating what happens with the reading. I mean, I still can hear my seventh grade home ec teacher drilling that into our heads that never, ever start a recipe without reading the whole thing. And she used to, like, put really funny things in a recipe to see if people were reading it. To test you. Oh, she totally did. Mrs. Newell, God bless her. I loved her. And she was a tough cookie and one of my favorite teachers ever. And I think of her all the time when I'm leveling yeah. off when we're cleaning up as we go along. She was famous for making sure you had the ingredients before you started the recipe. And every once in a while it's happened in the house when somebody's gone to make something. I'm like, you know, don't assume there's sugar. There should be sugar and vanilla and all those things. But, you know, Mrs. Newell had us like you had to take everything yeah. out. And you had to make a grocery list and you had to put salt or anything that, you know, never assume. And she would hide and it can things. be really Where? hard for people with small kitchens, and I realize that. But yeah. sometimes if you just use a baking sheet to collect everything on uh-huh. it, oh, that's that a good helps. Idea. Right. And, and what I like to do is I put it all on that baking sheet, and as I use it, I take it off the baking sheet. Mm. So that then I know that I've actually used everything. Um, yeah, so you don't get, like, a part and, like, where is this supposed to go? <laughs> or Right. Or you put the pie in the oven and you go, oh, <laughs> no, there's the egg. <laughs> yeah, that's a terrible feeling. <laughs> yes. And does it? Did you ever come up with something because of that happening, where you're like, "Huh, this is kind of cool," or "This is a new recipe"? No, or, you I know. wish mistakes led to like genius, but in, because in it my does, experience. right? Think about some of the foods throughout, you know, throughout history that I love the history of things that were created because of a flub. 
accidentally. Uh, yeah. Yes. There's so there are so many, and of course, not a one comes to my mind. This oh my brandied peach pie popovers. You're gonna want to make everything in this cookbook, and you know the holidays are coming up. Surprise your friends and family with something truly unique and, you know, just you, you'll be known for something new in your family and it can come from When Pies Fly. It is beautiful. Visit her website and, and Instagram and see all this great stuff. How, what, how was El Paso? I know it, was a, it seemed like a harrowing trip back. I forget what I read, but I remember thinking. It was I, a long trip, but it was a yeah. lovely, lovely experience. The people there were so kind and nice. Fabulous. And I just had a wonderful time. Yeah, there's nothing. I love I love following all of the the food, the tri, you know, the trails and all of the pe- people just so like they're so happy. I don't know, like I've never been to an event where there's food cookbooks and authors involved where you just people just look so excited and also to like share their stories about they see something like oh we make something like that and then it's the storytelling around the food that is uh, exactly right. It's just oh my goodness! Yeah. I'm look. I'm looking at your. I'm just yeah. Food porn is what. It is. <laughs> People just love it. Um, before I let you go, what what are some of your favorite cookbooks? And and if you've read anything, you know whether it's fiction or nonfiction that you'd like to share with the audience. Oh wow! What I I have been reading. Um, a lot lately, but the cookbooks, I have to say that my friends at the Canal House, Christopher Hersheimer and Melissa Hamilton, mm-hmm. have a new book out called Cook Something, and I love it. It's Ooh. readable and beautiful, and there's nothing but inspiration in it. So I'm okay. very, very excited for that. Cook Something. Okay, great. I'm yeah. writing that down. Um, it's, uh, the subhead is recipes to rely on, and it's really a book filled with good, smart techniques for everyday mm-hmm. cooking. Love it. Um, and in the world of fiction, I um, oh gosh, I just finished the Kate Atkinson, which I adored. I oh, I haven't read a, it yet. You loved it? Oh, it's great. I love her. And yeah, uh, I, I went too. on a Laura Lipman kick and uh-huh. then I read in the lake and then I read yeah. Sunburn and that was really fun uh, because you then the voice you start to think that they're your best friend. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read the most fun we ever had, which I thought was great. That was a treat. Most, that was a big yeah. so that was a big book this summer. That was a really big treat. Really good. You got good fun ones. book. Yeah, and the Testament is on my nightstand. That's uh and that's my travel with me this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's nothing like okay, having yeah. a great book to travel with. I'm looking at your frame tarts, this um, gorgeous um, – I'm on Kathy's Instagram as we're chatting. Go to Kathy Barrow's Instagram. It's so beautiful. Yeah, oh they're goodness. very pretty. This is how my mother baked tarts. Mm. She was a pie baker, and then eventually she became what I called the queen of tarts. Oh. She made oh. beautiful, beautiful frame tarts. I love that. Yeah, they are just so pretty to look at. And this cookbook is gorgeous, and it's called When Pies Fly. It's out now. It's a beautiful gift. And I, it's a gift to give to yourself. I also love bringing cookbooks as house gifts, and it's, the holidays are coming up. And I think there's just, you know, then I get really fancy sometimes. You could put it on a jelly roll pan, or you could tie it up with some ingredients. And I think that I just think it's a beautiful gift. It's a great housewarming gift. It's a great shower gift it, it's it's you know you're welcome i love giving books and if you can get to see kathy she can sign it and then you have an autograph book so even better and it's um and i sometimes will bake something or cook something with the cookbook and bring it that way i i love uh i love giving ideas and there's nothing like cookbooks for gifts and this is the gift giving season coming up well, it's always a gift-giving season, but especially now, and I'm thrilled to be able to share this and visit Kathy's website at kathybarrow.com and find her on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and if she's in a city that where you are, go see her, hear her stories, and check out this most – you can almost eat the book. Don't eat the book. <laughs> Disclaimer, don't eat the book, but you almost can. Don't eat and the we, book. We don't eat the book, and we can't wait to see you soon. And Same. You know, Enjoy the the uh, tour, and thank you so much for appearing on Reading with Robin, Kathy. Thank you, Robin. It was really fun. Thanks for tuning in to this week's installment of the Reading with Robin podcast. As always, our full-length podcasts will be available right here on robincall.com. We appreciate your support 
and look forward to having you over next week when we chat with our next featured guest. Have a great week, and happy reading.